Welcome back to EMC World and the Data Science Summit here uh, in beautiful Las Vegas. Uh, I'm Jeff Kelly with Wikibon, covering big data, business analytics, and uh, we're continuing our coverage of the big data and data science here in our, in our spotlight segment. Uh, today, uh, in this segment, we're going to talk to two data scientists from EMC. Uh, we've got Noel Theo, as well as Derek Lynn here joining us. Welcome. First time in the Cube. Yep, yes. First time here. Yes. Great to have you. Uh, so I thought maybe a good way to start was just tell us a little bit about yourselves and, and your role inside of uh, EMC. So my name is Derek Lin. I'm uh, the principal scientist here at Green Plum. Uh, before I came to Green Plum, I was with RSA doing a lot of security and analytic work. And prior to that, I was working in uh, computer speech uh, and language recognition uh, processing uh, research. So overall, I think I have about you know, more than 10 years under my belt. And, uh, and this is what I'm doing, this is what I'm enjoying the best, right? doing security. Okay. Um, I'm a senior data scientist here at Green Plum. I started as, um, in grad school as an applied mathematician and decided to explore you know, what kind of interesting problems there were in the industry. So I did a few years at Fox Interactive Media, uh, which actually was a Green Plum customer at the time and we were ingesting, you know, petabytes of data over mm -hmm. there, and then moved over to eHarmony to do some oh, okay. marketing research with there as well. And so mostly my focus here at Greenplum has been on the digital media space. Okay, great. So uh, I thought you know a good way to start was to let's, let's define data scientists, because we hear a lot, that, that term used a lot, and right. we hear a lot of people want to call themselves data scientists because it's a, you know, it's a in-demand uh, right. position. But help us understand, really, what is a data scientist? What are the core functions uh, what is a data scientist to you? Yeah, so to me, a data scientist is someone who works with data you know, on their daily, every day um, for a problem like um, prediction, um, classification, clustering, all these kind of problems using principled mathematical way of uh, uh, attacking the problem uh, with a tool, you know, with the tools of a, of, of a, of a uh, with a tool that is appropriate to the data size. Mm -hmm. so that, would be my, that would be my definition. Mm -hmm. well, what, do, what do you think? So I think people talk about data scientists in not only in the hard skills, but also in the soft skills as well, right. right? So you know, it's a given, I think, that data scientists are mathematicians and statisticians, and that there's a certain level of technical expertise that they have as well in terms mm -hmm. of, like for us coming from Greenplum, which is a database company, people know SQL, um, and people coming from other technologies, you know, you Java programmers, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And so there's that real familiarity in terms of, you know, just having technical expertise. But there's also the ability to communicate those ideas, right? And so the difference between a data scientist and a researcher who is really siloed in a corner and just tinkers with interesting problems is our focus primarily is on real big business problems, big data problems, mm -hmm. and really being able to translate what a business problem is and really try to find what the mathematical problem is underneath there. Doing the mm -hmm. math, which is interesting to us, and you know, the big puzzle, and that's what, you know, what really drives us and mm -hmm. you know, gets us all excited, and then translating back to the business so that it you know, sees the light of day and really like, has actionable. Value. Right, yeah, so communication is a, is a big part of the job, it sounds right. like. Um, so you've got to both communicate, as you said, on the front end, understanding what the business problem is, and then once you've done your analysis, kind of communicating that, telling a story to the business so they can kind of understand. How do you go about, you know, facilitating that that exchange of information between uh, the business and the data scientist team. From what point of view? Well, from your point of view, when you if you if you were to talk to uh, from the business side, and perhaps you're not kind of, you don't you're not getting the kind of feedback you want. How do you kind of elicit? How do you have that conversation and then help them understand your role <laughs> and the information you need to do your job better? I think for me, it's not. Sometimes people come in and they think that they know what solution they want before they even ask us the, qu the mm -hmm. right question. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes for us it's really, rather than what is it you want us to build for you, is where are your pain points? So what problems do you have, not how you think you should solve <laughs> them already, but really what problems do you have? And really getting to the base of what, how those problems manifest itself, mm -hmm. and so that we can, as you said, like bring it to the mathematical part of it and really understand it in our terms, how we can go ahead and solve them. Mm -hmm. Great. So why don't we uh, back up a little bit and tell us a little bit about how you guys got into the into the, the business of data science? Because um, we've got a lot of uh, perhaps uh, aspiring data scientists watching today. Uh, we'd love to learn from your experience how you kind of got into this business and, and what brought you here. Yeah, I think um, there's no predefined um, or standard way of becoming the data scientist, right? Because I mean, there's no such thing as a certified data scientist. There's no formal education training, but. But I, I feel anyone who has um, you know, a good 
strong theoretical theoretical understanding of um, some of the mathematical disciplines, um, they, they 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 could uh, become a data scientist. Mm -hmm. So for myself, I started out with the uh, master degree in double E in electrical engineering in in uh, in, um, in um, specializing in signal image processing, doing Im image reconstruction back then. Mm -hmm. And after gra I graduated, I became um, a speech scientist working in uh, speech signals, uh, processing uh, computers, uh, com processing um, human speech um, to facilitate um, you know, speech recognition problem. Mm -hmm. And then I got into fraud, you know, fraud area, fraud detection, sure, try to detect frauds in uh, financial service sectors. Mm -hmm. and, and then after that I become, today I'm, I'm, I'm moving on to, to Green Plum doing big data analy analytics uh, over, you know, um, many vertical domains. So, so I think, to me, I mean, I didn't start out my career thinking I'm going to become a data scientist, right. but rather, it's a, um, it's a progression of events. You know, mm -hmm. that 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 that, um, that I got, I get where I am today. Mm -hmm. How about yourself? Mine, I feel like it was almost an accident, actually. And so I was in grad school about five or six years ago, uh, pursuing a degree in mathematics and. Um, this, you know, it was this path of do I want to stay in research or do I want to go into the industry? Mm -hmm. And being an applied mathematician, I was encouraged you can that you should really go into the industry and see what out, what's out there. And so I asked, like, what can I do? And the options they said, well, you could be an actuary, and that was the only options I was actually given. And so I remember being a grad student and going to technical job fairs and having my resume to every single company, and I said, I'm a mathematician what could I do for you? And I basically got shot down entirely, which was really interesting for mm. most companies. And they said, you know, I don't know what we could do with you. Can you code? Are you a coder? Do you have a CS degree? And I'm like, no, I'm a mathematician. What's interesting, and um, I was actually an intern at Fox Interactive Media over in the quality assurance department. Um, and they said, you know, we really like your skills. You know, it's something that I think the, you know, you should look into the internet. You should look at, you know, we have really big problems. And even in QA, you'd, I think we could use your skill set, and it was by chance that they were starting a research, the research group had found out about me, and they said, hey, your skills are exactly what we need, and now that you have seen the whole software life cycle, and you understand what goes on in all parts of this organization, you, this is exactly the perfect place for you. And so it was kind of in a random way that it got me there, but I think now that there's so much, as you said, like the growth and the need for a data scientist has grown, that people in grad school won't have the problem I had now, right? Or I had then. Um, and so if you say to students now who are in grad school, you can say, you can be a data scientist, mm -hmm. you can be an analyst. Here are all the key words when you do your searches that you should you should be able to go and search and find. Yeah, and I, again, I think that the, the key thing is to have that strong and broad and understanding of uh, mathematics, probability theory, machine learning, and all that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. That's your foundation uh, to become a data scientist. Mm -hmm. And what about the the mindset in terms of uh, being ex exploratory, uh, be willing to kind of a experiment, be willing to fail even uh, when you're doing uh, your analysis? Because it is a very iterative process. Um, let's talk about that that kind of personality type that you think makes a good data scientist. Yeah, I think each one of us, the data scientist, is um, very curious, mm -hmm. uh, persistent when it comes to the problem, mm -hmm. and tend to be very creative too. Because the problem we are working at is is a new problem. We, we, it's not a problem that way we can go to Google and search and find a ready solution, but rather it's something we have to create on our own. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah, I think it, for me, I think that all data scientists have a puzzle junkie in them somewhere. Exactly, right? Like yeah. So I am the kind of person that if you give me something, it's like a challenge, like you issue a challenge and like the gauntlet is thrown and so you, all data scientists would immediately just jump on it and say like, I, I think, I don't know how to solve that immediately. Mm -hmm. If you knew how to solve it immediately when you saw it, it wouldn't be fun, right? <laughs> and right. so part of the challenge, and as Derek was saying, you know, it's things that haven't been solved before. So it's interesting and it's neat. And so somebody who, it's not just a nine to five and five, I can turn my brain off and suddenly I'll just deal with it tomorrow. It's one of those, like it bothers you, it nags you <laughs> until you, you know, figure mm -hmm. out what you can do, at least get to that next step. And you know, the mm -hmm. persistence and sense of accomplishment, you know, when you actually finish the solution and find, it's so interesting, like the payoff is so, so great once you can finally achieve that. And I think it takes a specific personality type, you know, who really craves and desires difficult things and challenging things mm -hmm. and to learn mm -hmm. something every time that they do something. Right, there are some aspects of becoming a data scientist that it seems to me you can train for, but there's others that are part of your personality, part of your makeup. Would that be, sound, sound accurate? Uh, I, I will agree with that, yes, yes. 
Yeah. So uh, tell us, uh, give some advice out there to some of the BI professionals, data warehousing professionals that are hearing a lot about data scientists. They, some of them might be a little concerned, like, okay, do I need to up my skills here? Uh, is this a threat to, our, to my, my job, essentially? Is data scientists gonna kind of overtake what we do? Uh, and are looking to maybe take that leap themselves. What kind of advice can you give them as they look to expand their skills? Because, you know, we'd also like to talk a little bit about the difference between traditional BI and data scientists, where you're not looking back, you're trying right. to predict things and look forward. So, what's some advice you might have for yeah, BI so, pros? Go ahead. Oh, so, so, so BI is more about descriptive statistics. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, the role we play here, we deal with a problem like um, predictive, predicted uh, modeling, that sort of thing. And, and for that, you again, like what I was saying earlier, you need a very strong foundation in, um, in um, linear algebra, statistics, um, probability theories. So with this, have, having this core will, out, will, out, will allow you to, to, um, to clearly see the problem, and see the nature of the problem, and propose a solution accordingly, mm -hmm. right? So the advice I would give is one, don't worry, your job is safe. Like I don't think the emergence of data science is at all negating the need for business intelligence. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it, business intelligence answers just the immediate question of what happened. You can't start planning for what will happen if you don't already know what happened. Right. So the need for reporting and really smart reporting that's emerging out of all the innovation from data science is not going away, and I think it's expanding. So you know, don't worry. So one piece of advice: don't worry. Uh, the second is also find what about BI is interesting to you, right? And so in terms of if it's really the solving of the business problem, maybe start thinking about um, expanding your skills there. Or if you really like the mathematics, start expanding your skills there. If you really like getting into the code that's behind it and really understand the algorithms, move there and really find the parts that are adjacent to your skill sets. And I think that would be kind of the gateway for them to really enter into the field of data science. Well, we talked in our intro, uh, Dave Vellante and I, about the, uh, the the lack of data scientists out there right now. How do you think we're going to fill that gap? Is it going to be training, uh, you know, people to become data scientists, or is it also kind of improving the technology, making it easier, abstracting away some of the complexity of the tools, so that you kind of lower the barrier to entry? A little bit of both. I mean, what's going to what, what is it going to take to uh, kind of fill that need that that, that we're seeing uh, right now? All of the above. A I, I, I don't know, it's one of those that I think um, every, all of those things will kind of ease the, the gap that we have right now. Mm -hmm. I, when you think about you know, your smartphone, in terms of there's so many things that you can do on it now, and you're benefiting from somebody else's innovation and something that was painful before. Mm -hmm. So in talking about like lowering the barrier to entry, certainly mm -hmm. there are things, especially as we, I, I said earlier with BI, making better BI and smarter BI will you know, that will be one aspect there. I think the people who have been hiding in the crevices of organizations who are secretly data scientists, mm -hmm. certainly those, we would encourage those to come out of the woodwork. But I think we really, my personal focus would be in like, educating the next generation of data scientists, mm -hmm. like really enforcing that you need to be a multifaceted kind of person and talent in terms of all the skills that you need in school, and that's the best place for you to learn and fail, mm -hmm. right? It's one thing, it's you learning to fail in school, like you know, in terms of like iterative processes mm -hmm. and understanding like clean data sets do not exist in the real world. So if right. you try to run any of these algorithms on something real, it won't work. And so learning all of those skill sets and how to communicate, as you said, across different teams and really emphasizing that in school would be a really great place. But Dad, I mean, what, what do you think we need to do to fill this gap? Is that um, I think this should be a st stronger push in terms of um, engineering education, mm -hmm. especially in this country. Um, yeah, bridging the educational gap um, with a heavier emphasis on engineering, computer science, and math. Mm -hmm. that, that's uh, certainly a requirement. Would you like to see some more formal data science programs in university at the university level, both the undergraduate and graduate level? I mean, is that something that's called for, or do you think it's just a matter of more uh, people getting into the field uh, of mathematics and statistics, and then kind of letting their career path kind of take them that data scientist route. I mean, would you like to see uh, you know, every major university have a program to actually train data scientists and, and make that a formal kind of program? Yeah, why not, right, of mm -hmm. course. Why not, yeah, yeah. that's the dream. Yeah. <laughs> it's always good. Great, um, all right, great, well thanks so much for joining us today. I think we learned a lot, a lot of great advice for data scientists out there. Um, we'll be right back in, the, in just a few minutes. We're going to continue the data science spotlight here at EMC World. Uh, I'm going to be joined by Dave Vellante and uh, we've got several more segments coming up for you, so stay tuned.